Hey everybody, Chris here again. Welcome back to the channel. Always good to have you with us. So today, I'm going to introduce you to something I am very excited about. How about if I told you that you could browse the web like it's 1995 natively in your web browser on a DOS or a Windows 3.11 or maybe even a Windows 98 machine? Well, you can, and today I'm gonna to show you how using a brand new service called ProtoWeb. So, what is ProtoWeb? In the words of the ProtoWeb team, it's a service that attempts to recreate the 90s internet experience. Basically, it's a service that's part historical, part archival, and part museum, if you will. So basically, a preservation site. And the nice thing about ProtoWeb is that all sorts of new sites are coming online on a very regular basis, including gaming sites or existing company sites. So for example, Compaq, Digital, and other sites. So what we're going to do today is have a look at ProtoWeb on a Windows 3.11 machine. And in honor of dos -Simber, we're also going to look at ProtoWeb on a DOS machine using the Arachne web browser. Let's get started. So to get started, I have a couple of different browsers that we can use. I've got Netscape Communicator, I've got Internet Explorer 5, and also Opera 362. Let's go ahead and get started with Netscape Communicator. And with Netscape launched, configuration couldn't be any easier. If you go to Edit, then Preferences, you can then go to Advanced, Proxies, and choose Manual Proxy Configuration. Click View, and in this case for my HTTP and FTP sites, I put in wayback.steptail.com, and from here you have a choice of ports, which are shown in the user's guide, of which I will put a link in the description for the user's guide, as well as list of tested web browsers. And basically you have a choice of a couple of different servers. There's a primary proxy server, a secondary proxy server, and a third server that will let you experience the internet as if you were dialed up at 56K. <laughs> so I definitely encourage you to try that experience as well. So once you have your proxy server configured, it's time to start browsing. And a great place to start is www.inode.com, which is basically the ProtoWeb Time Machine Directory, which gives you a list of lots of sites that are available to be browsed. And while we're on this page, I'll go ahead and mention something, and that is that Yes, in some cases, you'll be able to follow the links in some of these pages, but if a page has not been archived, you may not be able to get where you expect to go. Uh, but as sites become popular and requested, I'm sure, as they are available, they'll be added to the ProtoWeb experience. As we browse the selection of sites, you can see that they are massive. There's tons of sites available in tons of different countries as well. So this is definitely something to explore. And in addition to just websites, there are also FTP sites. So what I'd like to do at this point is choose a site or two and show you what they look like, and we can try some different sites on some different web browsers. One particular site we can visit is mcom.com, which is the Mosaic Communications Corporation. So, Mosaic, let's have a look. You can see here that this seamlessly loads, and wow, boy is this a Blast to the past as we look at this. So as you can see, there's a couple of different things to click on here. There's a resolution center, a backgrounder, as well as some executive biographies. Let's see what these guys were up to back then. Oh, look at this, Jim Clark and Mark Andresen. And we can see that Jim Clark was the chairman and Mark Andresen was the vice president of technology. And following that bio, we can find a nice link here that he designed the Mosaic graphical user interface in the fall of 1992 while he was an undergraduate student at the University of Illinois and a staff member at the National Center for Supercomputing Applications in Champaign, Illinois. So that's pretty exciting. Let's take Internet Explorer out for a spin. So to configure the settings in Internet Explorer, you can go Tools, Internet Options, and then come over to Connections and put your proxy server here and your port here. So for Internet Explorer, I want to show you EpicGames.com, the official Epic Mega Games webpage. 
And look at this on the side here. We've got some breaking news that we should go look at. But first, let's see what's in the Mega Games 97 and 98 lineup. Looks like we can learn all about Unreal, Jazz Jackrabbit 2, and Age of Wonders. And if we click on the link for Jazz Jackrabbit, we can see that we're brought to the Daily Carrot, where it tells us all about Jazz Jackrabbit 2. So back on the main screen here, let's have a look at some breaking news. And here we can see that as of February 10th, 1998, that Epic has licensed the Unreal Engine to Ion Storm. As well as an mplayer.com scores Unreal is set up. So as you can see, there's a lot to explore here, and I'm going to leave the rest up to you. But there you have it, epicgames.com in Internet Explorer 5. Next, let's have a look at Opera 3.62. And to configure Opera for a proxy server, just go Preferences, Proxy Servers, and there you can put in your selection for HTTP and FTP. So here in Opera, let's have a look at ID Software. Wow, look at that, copyright 1997. And since we're here, let's have a look at Killer Games. So across the top here, you see a selection of some really great games that I think pretty much everybody's familiar with. We have links to Quake, links to Ultimate Doom, Final Doom, Doom 2, Heretic, Hexen, and Hexen 2. I apologize if I mispronounced any of those. Let's have a look at Doom 2. So this is really neat. Look at this. We've got a nice graphical indication here. Uh, it looks like it's from the game. You've got a little bit of an explanation about it. Some talks about situation analysis, that it's available in DOS, Windows, and Mac form. And you can actually click on an image here and download it if you want to see it. Oh, that is so fun. So as you can see, there's a lot to explore here. I suggest you log on and try it out. So the last thing I want to show you on a Windows web browser is FTP access, because that is also supported. But first, take just a minute to admire this beautiful Netscape homepage from 1997. Wow. So to show you how FTP works, you can see that I've put an FTP address in the location bar, starting with FTP colon slash slash. And in this case, we've chosen to go to the infamous Simtel. And on the left here, you can see there's lots of games. There's some MS-DOS programs, as well as NT and OS2, Windows 3 and Windows 95. And you can see a variety of programs here, which was the Simtel Mirror. Let's go ahead and click on this HTML link. And from there, you can see a couple of files in the directory, as well as an index file. If we click on that, we can see some information about the two programs that are here. One program is a mini HTML offline browser with frames, and another is web forms that lets you create www forms. Let's have a look at this mouse directory. And in here, you can see there's also a list of programs. Let's look at the index file. So here you can see there's an anti mouse program, an arrow action program, and there's a program that makes your invisible mouse visible again, which is a good thing because nobody wants an invisible mouse. <laughs> as well as a Windows keyboard replacement program, which is really interesting, and an option to use the right button instead of double click, and a couple of other programs. So there's definitely lots to explore here. So that pretty much wraps up Microsoft Windows. Let's have a look at MS-DOS. So here we are in MS-DOS using the Arachne web browser. And I am on my Compaq LTE 5400, so I thought it would only be appropriate to load Compaq.com. And you can see that it renders quite nicely. Now before I get too far along, to configure Arachne for ProtoWeb, you'll want to click on the desktop over here and then go to Options, and Internet Settings. And in here, you will see options to set an HTTP proxy server as well as an FTP proxy server. Let's navigate to the AST web page. And we can see this renders quite nicely under MS-DOS. Let's go ahead and choose the Americas region. Oh, before we do that, note this is best displayed with Microsoft Internet Explorer or Netscape Now 2.0. But I think Arachne for DOS will work for us today. So 
So here you can see that the Pentium 2 233 system will be on its way soon from AST's new Bravo computer line. Hold on to your hats, it'll be here soon, folks. And much like the Windows web browser, we can also use the ProtoWeb FTP proxy server to access old FTP sites. In this case, I've gone to Compaq, where we can go and find the soft packs that we need to keep my fleet of LTE 5000 series machines running good and strong. And as a final bonus, let's look at Retrozilla under Windows 10. To configure it, we can go to Edit, and then Preferences, go to Advanced, Proxies, and put in our proxy settings here. So here under Windows 10, I've loaded up the inode web gateway once again, and let's have a look at 3D Realms. I want to show you something special. So if we go to the 3D Realms page and go to Company Info, there's actually something that is not even available on the Wayback Machine that you'll find here called the Virtual Tour. And from here we can start the tour. And it'll show you a little bit about the office building that 3D Realms was in. From here you can take the elevator. You can push the button. You can go to the second floor. We can allow pop-ups. <laughs> and flash, though apparently I don't have flash installed. But you get the idea. This is definitely something to explore. Uh, for those of you who saw the 8-Bit Guys video on 3D Realms, this will be of great interest to you as well. Another thing I'll note is, as you explore ProtoWeb, it is in beta form, so there will be issues, and that's to be expected. Definitely feel free to follow the documentation links and offer that feedback to the team, or comment below if you find something that doesn't quite work right. And one more thing, something to keep in mind is we may find at times that the load on ProtoWeb is a little bit high. Just try again. You'll get in eventually, and trust me, it's worth the wait. All right, well, that's what I had for you today. Definitely subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell, and you'll be notified when new content is available. If you like the video, please do give it a thumbs up. If not, you know what to do. Well, anyway, that's all for now. Can't wait to see you till next time. Bye now.